Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I want to talk about the markets this morning, kind of an update and a little more uh, analysis into it. My main uh, motto at the moment is uh, markets can remain irrational for longer than you can remain solvent. And I think that was a saying from John Maynard Keynes. I'm not a Keynesian, but that's one of the things he said that I agree with. And what does that mean? Well, basically it means don't leverage yourself uh, because markets can do things that seem irrational. And I think that's what, what's happening right now. Uh, prior to the uh, election on November 8th, uh, and if you remember in October as well, when, I, when the news uh, came out that the FBI was reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton, we had nine straight down days in the S&P and uh, the Dow, which was hadn't been seen since uh, 1980. So uh, the market was saying, wow, if Trump wins, that's really horrible for the stock market. And then early in the morning of November 9th, when the market found out that Trump was going to win, even though it wasn't official, the Dow dropped 800 points. Gold went up $60 to 1337 But then all of a sudden things flipped. And now we've seen the Dow go from around 17,500 to today where we've been at a high of 19,032. And by the way, it's 1020 a.m. London time, so 520 a.m. Uh, New York. So yeah, the Dow today went up above 19,000. Uh, right now it's uh, 18,991, up 40 points. S&P got above 2,200. The high was 2,205. Right now we're 2,201. So We've had a complete turnaround in the uh, stock market. And, uh, you know, now having a Trump administration come in on January 20th is better than white bread, you know, uh, the better than that invention, it seems, sliced white bread. And it's just confusing, in my opinion. Um, I personally think longer term, you know, if... Trump does what he says, uh, if he puts America first, I, I can see the U.S. economy doing really well, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years, if not decades, to uh, unwind the whole financialization, the, the huge amount of debt that has been imposed on the U.S. economy and the U.S. taxpayer in the last 35 years. So... Uh, very confusing. So as I said, uh, you know, irrational markets don't leverage. Um, what else? Well, the other thing I'd like to talk about, just after the election, I made a video saying, did Trump make a deal uh, or something? And then they've, you know, the Obama administration's come in and supported the market. I don't know about that. Uh, I personally actually don't think he made a deal, but uh, I do think maybe that the Obama administration wants to go out on a good note, you know, goose up the market, and then when they leave, you know, everything uh, maybe collapses. Uh, or, you know, the other thing is maybe investors uh, are running away from the dollar. And I know the dollar has been strong against the other currencies, but the dollar has been weak against the Dow and the S&P. <laughs> People don't look at it like that. They think, oh, the Dow and S&P are going up. That's a good thing. But no, that means that your dollar doesn't buy as many stocks anymore. So there's all these things, you know, are we going into like a hyperinflation or uh, very difficult to say. Uh, and how could the Obama administration help support the markets? Well, there's something called the Exchange Stabilization Fund. And I read here from Wikipedia, it says, the ESF is an emergency reserve of the United States Treasury Department, normally used for foreign exchange intervention. This arrangement, uh, as opposed to having the central bank intervene directly, allows the U.S. government to influence currency exchange rates without affecting domestic uh, money supply. 
as a, as of October 2009, the fund held assets worth 105 billion dollars, including 58 billions in SDRs from the uh, IMF. Uh, but it also says here that in 1970, uh, the law was changed. Uh, a change in the law, and I read from Wikipedia, a change in the law in 1970 allows the Secretary of the Treasury, with the approval of the President, to use money in the ESF to deal in gold, foreign exchange, and other instruments of credit and securities. So you could include anything in there. Securities, you know, could be stocks, bonds. So what I'm trying to say is that very easily the uh, U.S. Treasury's uh, ESF, which is under the control of Jack Lew, Secretary of the Treasury, they could have gone in there on November 9th uh, through their um, banker, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan... Uh, probably has all that ESF money. <laughs> They've got an account there, JP Morgan account. It's a five digit number, the JP Morgan accounts, if I'm not mistaken. And they just went in there and started buying uh, stocks. Uh, is that possible? It's a possibility. So what else? Uh, the other thing I wanna talk about is uh, a, new, a story that came out in August in Fortune magazine. And the, the title of the story, the article is, This Trump Economic Advisor Wants America to Go Back to the Gold Standard. So this is about an economist called Judy Shelton. And she's been advising, uh, not directly Donald Trump, but uh, she's been talking to uh, Mnuchin and uh, some other economic, close economic advisors to uh, Donald Trump. And basically she says that uh, having... Uh, fair exchange rates will help free trade. She says she gets annoyed with people saying that Trump is anti-free trade. What he is against is currency manipulation. And she goes on to say that under uh, a gold standard, uh, money is neutral and it's not politicized or nationalized. So it's a very good... Uh, measure of value and a measure for investment and currencies and it doesn't allow people to cheat on the currency and she equates what we have now the floating exchange rate uh, system with uh, for example a hundred yard uh, dash uh, race uh, and then the 10 or 8 people do the race and then they decide that for runner number 6 uh, his 100 yard is only actually 10 yards. So he goes on to win despite not having won the race. And that's how she equates uh, the floating rate exchange uh, system that we've had since 1973. And uh, we don't know if they're going to go back on a gold standard. Uh, one thing she proposes is the U.S. Treasury issuing uh, gold-backed uh, bonds and she thinks the Chinese would do the same thing, and that would stabilize uh, currency rates. Uh, so that's an interesting thing, you know, uh, point that I wanted to talk about. I'll put the link to that story below in the description. So right now, it's uh, almost 10.30 uh, a.m. London or 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Gold is up about four bucks, 12, 17, 50. We've been up to 12.21, so gold, Seems to be, uh, you know, made a bottom for now around 1202. Uh, the Dow is 18, basically 19,000, up about 50 points. S&P 2202, up four. Silver 1683, up 25. So silver's doing well, up one and a half percent. The pound is down 50 pips, or 0.4% at 124.41. Euro, uh, pretty much unchanged, 106. 34 uh, dollar against the yen unchanged 110.81 so uh, what else have we got the FTSE is up 75 points at 68.45 still way below the all-time high of 71.30 or thereabouts same thing for the DAX below the all-time highs at 10,750 up 77 so stock market is doing well all around the world but 
kind of a non-confirmation that the U.S. is making new all-time highs and uh, the U.K. and Germany are not, despite even weaker currencies. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, bond markets, uh, U.S. 10-year Treasury is at uh, 230, so that has kind of stabilized. We saw uh, that yield close at, close at 235 last week. 30-year uh, yield uh, just below 3% at 297. And this week, don't forget, we got Thanksgiving, so the markets are going to be closed on Thursday in the U.S. They'll reopen on Friday, but it will be like a half day. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, share this video far and wide. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. If you'd like to donate uh, to my channel, there's some links below in the description. I'll uh, talk to you later. Take care. Bye.